Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. Well, let me assure you there is nothing to write home about on the Chris Dewar High School athletic resume. But I did block, or at least attempt to block, two parade All-Americans in my day. One on my own team, practice squad purgatory every day, and the other was a 330-pound defensive tackle who I still have nightmares about. I bore you with this story only because I appreciate the unique, scary, and yet crazy fun opportunity ahead for Quincy High's offensive tackles in Edwardsville Friday night as they prepare to battle 6 foot 6 230 pound junior AJ Apanisa, a blue chipper who just might be the most heavily recruited defensive end in the entire country. Happy hunting, boys. We're not ignoring the fact that he's a good player. He's a great player. He's got scholarship offers to wherever, but we're taking the challenge in stride. He's got a five-star. He's got a high rating. He's got all the reins in the world. But I have nothing to lose, so I'm just going to go out there every play and give it all I can, every single down. Uh, we've been practicing really hard. We were going over our keys and everything. I mean, it's an honor play against them. Not really thinking about who they are, but how we're supposed to block them. Um, and I told the kids, too, they know this, you know this, everyone knows this. I mean, one player isn't going to you know, win or lose a football game, but certainly he's, a, he's one of the best in the country and we'll have our work cut out against us. You know, we're really coming hard for him, and it's going to look great on our highlight tapes when we're knocking down an All-American. It's not about what comes easy. Quinty High has moved long past moral victories and the need for springboards. No, Rick Little simply wants more for his program. And so he's embraced the idea of taking the big bite with this team and with this offensive line, from which he expects so much and of which is so critical to the Blue Devils' elevated goals. Uh, certainly, um, this isn't the easy route. You know, with Edwardsville and, and, and Alton and North Lawndale and obviously Notre Dame on our non-conference schedule, that's not the easy way to go. But, uh, you know, we th feel like uh, we're to the point where we uh, can take that on. We can challenge ourselves and, uh, and work to get better against a, a battle-tested schedule. It's not just Espinosa that's big. There are other DNs just as big in their noses. 300-plus and big and all across the board. It's just going to be... It's going to be fun, it's going to be tough, but we're going to prove, you know, we are a strong line. It's going to come down to what can we do, you know, as a football team. And we really preach that, that, you know, we really like our football team. We like, um, you know, we, we, we like our guys, you know, and we feel like we give great effort, great energy, play assignment, smart football, we're going to be there in the end. And that's that's what it's about. You know, um, you look at some of their scores, you know, uh, Edwardsville from a year ago who was extremely talented. You know, teams, you know, now, unless I played with them, I mean, they were, they were respectable scores, you know, so we feel like, um, you know, we, we can you know, play hard and certainly respect them, but uh, we just want to give ourselves a chance at the end to win the football game. Quincy High was one of four area teams to receive votes in the Illinois preseason prep power poll, along with Central, Brown County, and Rushville Industry, but one, only one area team cracked the top ten this preseason. That was Q&D, which is ranked seventh in Class 4A. The Raiders will open with third-ranked Rockford Lutheran Friday night at home. Very little movement to report in the Missouri media poll this week as well. Palmyra remains entrenched at the three spot in Class 2. Despite that loss to Brookfield, South Shelby is ranked seventh in a tie in Class 1. And Hannibal and now Mark Twain are among the teams in our area receiving votes. We've got volleyball for you tonight. The opener for Rich Myers Q&D squad at Unity, Riley Hummert, showing off the full range of her game. First with the finesse, she's so darn good. And then it's the power game for the side out right here for Ms. Hummert more forcefully making her presence felt at that point. At this point, however, QD's lead would be cut into, courtesy of Kaylee Kuhn, who has been red hot in the early season. Check her out right here, hitting the wickets and playing a bit of volleyball pinko to get that kill in. Nine to four QD leading. QD would rally back as well. Sarah Nieswender right here coming up with a nice pop set kill for her as well. Kaylee Kuhn about to answer back and do her thing as well in this one. She had a couple of big kills on the night. She ended up with seven of them and four blocks for her team. Just too much of Riley Humbert and company. She had 11 kills. Great night as well. How about this one for Lacey Roberts serving up the ace for her team as Quincy Notre Dame wins in straight games tonight. 25-15, 25-18 to were your final there. How about Hannibal at home tonight for the first time. Kaylin Bailey and company hosting Troy and doing some great work in this one. Shelby Nelson right here with a bit of a knuckleball changeup for her squad, getting that in niftily as well. And about a great game as well from the setter tonight. Sydney Bennett doing the dump thing right here. The setter dump thing as well as anybody. Made it two to nothing at that point. All of a sudden, Hannibal about to erupt in this one. Kaylee Murphy getting one in as well. And then more from Shelby Nelson doing her thing as Hannibal wins in straight games as well tonight, beating up on Troy. Some scores to pass along in softball. 
South Shelby all over Paris tonight. 26 to nil was your final there. Golf, Quincy High School wins a dual meet at Panther Creek over Sacred Heart Griffin. Safer, Sacred Heart Griffin, I should say. TJ Wensing was your medalist with a three over 75. At the Mount Sterling, Guad Payson was your winner, and Drew Berwinkle of Payson was your medalist with a 35 on the day. The Quincy High tennis team on the girls' side opens with a win today over Palmyra. Eight to one was your final there as well. And we've got women's soccer today. Hotly contested action in this one. Bree Johnson for Culver Stockton. One of 34 shots for her team. The near half bicycle kick off the post. Wooden go story of the day for the Culver Stockton Wildcats. Leah Miller sending this one in for a point blank header. Wooden go as well. 34 shots for Culver Stockton. In regular